How to catch carp. Carp are one of the hardest fighting freshwater fish that we have here in the United States. They are in every creek, lake, pond, river you can think of. They grow up to 50 something pounds and they are super fun fighters. We're gonna talk about the bait. We're gonna talk about different rigs, show you guys how I do everything in different situations for catching carp. For bait, the most common bait I think a lot of people use is white bread, also corn, and a form of dough bait. So this is my dough bait recipe. I'll show you guys how I mix that up. What I do is I get one can of breadcrumbs, one can of corn, and some jello. Mix that all in the bucket. That makes a bait that looks like this. You wad this up, put it on the hook, and it works. To me, that is more effective than bread, but bread does have its purpose. If you really don't want to spend any money, I'll show you how to do it with just corn. Just taking corn, sweet corn, putting it on a hook on your line. It's just wadding a whole bunch of corn onto a small hook like that and throwing it out there. If you need to get some distance on it, put a little split shot weight on there and you toss that out. Now, in order to use that method effectively, you really want to take a can of corn, throw it in the water and chum the water. Otherwise, you just got one really tiny bait sitting out there and um, yeah, it'll work if the fish are really, really active, but if they're not really, really active, you're gonna need to chum the water. The second most common way that people here fish for carp is with white bread. So you take the bread and you take your small hook, you can put some corn on there if you want or not, and you just basically mash it down like that, cast that out in the water and it's gonna float for a while and then it's gonna fall down and sink to the bottom. And if the carp are real active on the surface, this is your method to go with. So for us out here right now today, the carp are not surfacing. You cannot see them surfacing. So this is not gonna be the best method. But you would basically just do that and leave that bread out there and see if they hit it. All right, so over here, we're gonna throw one more line out. That's just a bread ball going out. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick that in a rod holder. So in my opinion, the more effective method is using pack bait. This is the pack bait. This is the breadcrumbs, corn, and jello that I mixed together. I got this recipe from Luke, Catfish and Carp. He is basically the goat of all carp fishing in America. He's the man, the myth, the legend. And so with the pack bait, what you do is you basically attach it in a wad to your, uh, to your line, and you have your bait dangling down, which is gonna be, again, corn or fake corn. So let me show you two ways we do this. Basically what you do is you take your main line, you put a weight to a swivel, to a small leader, to a small hook. Put some corn on that little hook. That's gonna be your hook bait. And then you take your breadcrumbs, corn and jello. You mash that onto the weight into a ball, just like this. You don't wanna use a very big ball, just a small ball. So your line now looks like that. And you throw this out there and you wait. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you take this, you want to gently cast it out there, y'all. If you, if you try to heave this, all that bread's going to come right off the hook. And what that does is it chums the water, y'all. All right, guys, so my preferred method of, my preferred rig for carp fishing is this. You take your main line, two ounce weight, and I buy these spiral things on Amazon. They're about a dollar. It's like $15 for 15 of them or something like that. I'll leave links in the description to a to a small leader that I tie on with a small hook. And this is called a hair rig, y'all, where the bait hangs below the hook. Carp, when they go to get your bait, they fiddle around with this in their lips. And they decide whether they want to eat it or not eat it. If they want to eat it, they suck it in a little further, and that's when you get the hook set. This is going to have a higher hookup percentage ratio than just putting the bait on the hook. 100% is, guys. Just trust me on that one. So what I do is I put the dough bait on the spiral thing and what the spiral thing does is it helps control the bait there it, it helps hold the bait on there so you can cast the bait further and when this hits the water your your hook is going to stay closer to where you're chumming because the the pack bait doesn't actually catch the fish y'all it just attracts the fish like chum this catches the fish so this is my preferred method and it's not all that much more expensive now if you're going like true european style they don't use this this is their lead weight and the lead weight is designed to actually hold the bait on there. Um, 
Where I fish, there's way too many snags. Those weights are like $5 a piece. I lose way too much gear for that. So this is the cheap method that I use. So let's get this loaded up and get that out there. With the dough bait on the spiral thing, you can really launch this bait out there, y'all. I mean, you can launch that out there. It's gonna stay on the line. So I've already put the bread on this line. And like I said, the bread doesn't hold on very well. So the bread's already fallen off this line. So I'm gonna re-rig that with my spirals. But well, my buddy Dat's over here, on, and Dat's got a dog demon because he likes to make life challenging. So <laughs> Dat has got bread on his line, so Dat is going to work the bread line for us and see how that goes. Side note, if you don't use all of it, you can put this in the fridge for a couple days. You can also freeze it and thaw it back out. It'll be perfectly good. If you're using the spiral method, you can let that bait sit out there for about 45 minutes to an hour before you reel back in. If you're using the... Um, the bait just wrapped around a sinker, you probably want to check it every 20 to 30 minutes. And if you're using just white bread on a hook, you're going to want to check that bait about every five or 10 minutes because it's just not going to stay on there any longer than that. So guys, there's also two methods when you're doing this, right? You can leave the line up there in a vertical pole holder like this. Fish takes it and he, he's going to basically set his own hook. Or you can use a rod holder like this and it goes like that, and you leave your drag very, very loose, and the fish will run with it, and you'll hear the drag screaming, and then you pick up and you just kind of reel down on the fish. With carp, you don't set the hook, guys. You, 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 I mean, you can give it a, a tiny take, but uh, carp have very delicate lips, and you don't have to yank, because if you yank, you'll rip their lips. So you just reel down gently, and you'll have the fish on the line. Rods and reels for carp fishing. You don't really need anything too expensive. This is a $50 Cast King Sharky bait feeder. I like it because it's got the live line reaction. So when this is engaged, it's in free spool. You click that off or reel down and that stops. I absolutely love that, not necessary. If you're going after big carps, you do want a sturdy rod, something in the medium heavy range. Anything that uh, you can use for cat fishing, you can use for carp fishing. So honestly, it's the same gear. It's the same line you want to use. 20, 30 pound line, you want to use medium heavy um, rods and reels, and you're good to go. You don't actually have to buy any kind of specialty reels or, or rods or anything like that for carp fishing. Oh, you got a common, all right. Bring it over here, I got a net. Six-pound six pound test on a dog demon. Well, you only got like a two-pound common carp. There you go. He's over the concrete. All right, he's over the concrete. <laughs> oh, dude. I have a common uh, in a second. Okay, there we go. Sweet. There we go. So there we go, y'all. That. That, that's your fish. I didn't catch yeah, it. So check this out, y'all. Literally, I'm using a, a tiny little hook right there. It's a size 2 octopus by Gamagatsu. Yep. Tiny little hook and six pound test line and then a dock demon. That's right. Literally it. Um, I can't believe you did that with a dock demon. But yeah, guys, yeah. the tiny hook is actually key. So if you try to use a giant hook, you're not going to get the giant hook in their mouth. And then also, when you fight them, you got to fight them a little delicately because this is all soft cartilage and it will tear y'all. And one other thing I will say is if you guys wanna buy any piece of accessory to carp fish, it is a landing net. This is a very, very small carp, right? But carp do not quit fighting ever, all the way up until the bank. So they're not like catfish where you get them to the bank and you can just reach in there with your hand and grab them by the mouth and pull them up. A carp will not do that, it will fight you all the way until you get it to the bank. I can't tell you how many I lost before I bought a net uh, because I, I would just try to manhandle the carp up here. Absolutely, buy a cheap net, buy a good net, but get a landing net, otherwise you are gonna lose probably 50% of the carp you try to catch because yeah. their lips are so delicate, they will spit the hook or tear the hook out of their mouth. That's hooked up all, again, y'all, with the dock demon. <laughs> Piece of bread. I'm ready. I got the net. I haven't seen it. 
Oh, he hit the leg. Whoa. Carp, I did see the... The way he never quit, that's what oh, makes me think. giant common. This is a common carp, man. They never quit fighting, y'all. Never quit. Like, if this was a catfish, you could have just dragged him up by now. You gotta be you, on concrete. You broke off? Oh, no, he's still there. Oh, you're there. You're on. Bring him this way. I'm trying, dude. I'm yep, scared of the yep. concrete. Is this out of my reach? Yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that's a good one, man. Oh, man. That is a good one. That was wild. You want to weigh him? Yeah, we'll that's weigh him. That's probably eight to ten pounds. Okay, look, guys. See how I was telling y'all? You have to fight these delicately. Let me see if you guys can see this. His lip has already started to tear. So if you fight them too hard, you see the hole in his lip? I hope you guys can see that hole in his lip where the hook went in. It tore, it gouged a little bit. So if you fight them too hard, you'll rip the hook right out of their lips. Now luckily Dat hit a big one, so his lips are a little bit thicker and harder. Good, good fish, Dat. Thank you, sir. Let's see, man. On pounds. It is an 11.5, sold an 11 pound carp. 11 pounder, all right. 11 pounder, man. Yeah, there he goes. He's on? Yeah, he's on. He's on. So y'all, you see how I did that? The line was peeling out. And I just reeled down and I did a slight uptick with the rod tip. I didn't set it like you set a catfish. I mean, you set it like you set a catfish on a circle hook. You just reeled kind of down on them. And the only reason I pulled the line up was to just relieve any, any uh, slack in the line. It's a nice size. It's a nice size, man. They never stop fighting. Now, this is what I was saying. Like, they see the net, they get to the bank, they never stop fighting. I don't understand why more people don't fish for these fish. They never quit. And you do have to fight them a little delicately, a little more finesse. You can't really manhandle them. And the little ones are even more feisty. Take off, they'll take a rod in. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna let you really into it. See if I can just turn around. There we go. Dude, they're so fat here. They are. Oh, that's even fatter than mine. Is it? Yeah, look how thick he is. Yeah, that's a big boy, man. Oh, he was just eating Thanksgiving dinner. Right, let's, let's get him up here. Dude. This one hit on the dough bait, y'all. You want me get? Nah, he didn't take off with it. <laughs> My other line's gone. Look how fat this guy is, y'all. They fight so hard, y'all. I don't understand why people don't target these things. They're abundant. They get huge. They fight so easy. They fight so hard. You can catch them on bread or corn. What's not to love about these fish, y'all? And they make absolutely excellent catfish bait. So there. There we go, guys. 13.8. 13, that is a 13-pound carp, y'all. 13-pound carp. I mean, anytime you're catching a 13-pound fish, Damn, that's a hell of a fish. That thing will... All right, y'all, so it is now midday. The bites have definitely slowed down, so we're going to wrap this video up. But I hope I taught you guys something. I did show you several different baits you can use for carp fishing. I did show you several different rigs you can use for carp fishing. I explained to you guys the rods, the reels, and the way you actually set the reels up. If you're not out there fishing for carp, man, you are missing out. They get absolutely enormous. They're fun to catch. They don't ever stop fighting, and you can catch them with uh, bait from the grocery store. I mean, what is not to love about catching carp, man? Dat, big thanks for helping me out on that one. I know you landed some on some bread, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, guys, we're going to get out of here. I'll catch you all in the next video.